Don't worry if you end up spending another weekend inside. Because Rich Bonaducci has a couple of ideas regarding how to spend your time. Yes, I do. I'm thinking of reviewing things. Yes, first up, a movie I've kind of put out, off talking about for a while since my thoughts on it are so hard to suss out in words. But since that was what I'm supposed to do, it's my job, I'm going to try. Although, I am thinking of ending things. People like to think of themselves as points moving through time. But I think it's the opposite. We're stationary. And time passes through us. <laughs> blowing like cold wind. Based on the book by Ian Reid, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, follows a woman, played by Jesse Buckley, who travels with her new boyfriend, Jesse Plemons, to meet his parents, one of which is Tony Collette, for the first time, except that's not really what it's about at all. It was directed and adapted for the screen by Charlie Kaufman, of being John Malkovich and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind fame, two of my all-time favorite movies. and. Uh, that should tell you all you need to know. You're in for a weird ride. Has Kaufman also wrote Synecdoche, New York, and Anomalisa. And this one is just as dense and desolate as the two of those put together. And yet I still loved it. I was intrigued, but confused, concerned, and then elated. And the filmmaking craft behind it is insanely genius. Kaufman is not normal, and neither are his movies. They are challenging, thought-provoking, and Good. I was contemplating giving this a flat out question mark, but <laughs> I'm going to give it a B plus since I, it's part of my job to do that. It's one of those films you'll likely be mulling over for quite some time afterwards, wondering, what did I just watch? What is it about? Do I even understand it? Should I read the book? I think I'm going to read the book. I'm thinking of reading the book. But anyway, check it out. This one, too, Jesse Plemons is back. He's a busy guy. This time he forces Lakeith Stanfield to go undercover to get close to Daniel uh, Kaluuya of the Black Panthers. He's the leader, Judas and the Black Messiah. The Black Panthers are forming a rainbow coalition of oppressed brothers and sisters of every color. Their aim is to sow hatred and inspire terror. I will learn all that I can. I these ain't no terrorists. You can murder a liberator, but you can't murder a liberation. You can murder a revolutionary, but you can't murder a revolution. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder freedom. Wow, this is a good one. Just watching this clip, I'm reminded. This is my vote for movie of the year. I can't say enough good things about Judas and the Black Messiah. It's, it just fires on all cylinders. Everything you look at, everything that needs to go well to make a movie an instant must-see classic is in it. From the masterful screenplay, to its cracking dialogue, to the artful direction, and especially the fiery performances. To say nothing of its text, a theme, it's a, it's a treatise on, on racial inequality that takes a historical view, but it's just as relevant today. I guess that's why it has a combined average of 96% on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics and the audience and why I'm giving Judas and the Black Messiah a flat out A. It's two hours and six minutes of biographical historical drama that is in theaters now, but if you don't want to go outside the house, it's available on HBO Max, and you should check it out, especially since if you want to be in on the award season shows, I'm figuring it's going to be there in a prominent way, and it deserves it. And you want to say, yeah, I saw it first before everybody else was talking about it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you want to be able to say that. Okay, I said Rich. it, because I, I did. <laughs> you did. You usually do. You saw it before anybody else even saw it. <laughs> That's I saw it a while ago, but uh, I would watch it again today. Oh, it's so good.